Hecock 45 here. We all have to behave today because the range officer is on duty. Sweet, sweet. Let's shoot another one. Yes, the range officer. Where's that magazine? Let me grab it. Springfield Armory, the range officer. Brought it out to uh, run it through its paces. This is a fairly new offering from uh, Springfield. It is uh, 1911, if you couldn't tell. And it is designed to be out of the box ready if you want to go compete. IDPA, uh, IPSC, uh, just about any uh, competition. This gun is uh, designed to be pretty much ready for that. You have a really nice clear picture uh, uh, adjustable sight, uh, rear sight. It's like the old Bomar that was so popular back in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, I guess. And in fact, it looks much like that. Uh, it's the same sight I put on my Series 70. Had it carved out for one of those back in the uh, late 80s. Uh, kind of regret now. They're so collectible. But uh, nice rear sight and nice clear front sight. The only thing is it's black. Uh, if uh, this were my gun, I were going to keep it. I'd have to have that thing painted because I was losing the sight right there. I'm so used to that big white dot jumping around and being able to get on, on targets quickly with that. So uh, that's something I would have to do. Uh, if this were mine, this is a tested evaluation uh, gun from Springfield. So I'll refrain from painting on it, you know, keep the spray can in the closet. So let me lay it down here. Uh, beautiful grips. I, I love the Springfield grips and their, their logo there. And uh, as I say, you got a pretty nice uh, beaver tail there. You're definitely not going to get any hammer bite with that. It uh, feels really good. Nice uh, thumb safety. You got the long trigger. You have the uh, flat mainspring housing, the, the, the basic package of things that uh, most people have done to uh, a competition gun, you know, and maybe even a non-competition gun, just uh, to get that 1911 feeling good and getting a good sight picture. Uh, those are some of the basic things that, that probably most people, I'm safe in saying most people, eventually get done to it, unless they're just going to keep it uh, kind of a stock, you know, military version which you know I love even more than these but uh, got all the basics and uh, that's about about it your uh, slide locks is pretty much of a stock uh, it's it's mostly you know back here we get that great grip and then a nice thumb safety that's easy to get a hold of uh, the hammer is a kind of a unique hammer I'm not sure who makes that the hammer and trigger system it really reminds me of the chick chip McCormick hammer that uh, and sear that I put in Oh, a gun or two of mine back in the day, but uh, it, it, it's, it has a nice trigger. So that's what it's designed to be. It kind of bridges the gap. It's uh, just a good old shooting gun. Uh, you know, if you want a 1911, if I wanted another 1911 just to plink around with and, you know, shoot on the range or hunt with, whatever it is I might do, self-defense, this gun would uh, pretty much fit the, fit the bill. I don't suppose the trigger's too light for a carry gun. Uh, a lot of people uh, would say no. Uh, not shot enough yet to, to make that determination for myself. But it is a pretty nice little package. Good for about anything. Obviously, a uh, full-blown race gun, it's not. But uh, it's, it's, it's a nice-looking outfit and uh, seems to shoot well. We have shot it, uh, oh, I don't know five, six magazines, seven, eight magazines maybe through it. I've had no trouble with it. And, uh, you know, variety of ammo. So, so far, uh, so good. And it's a Springfield. You know, I've had Springfield. I have another Springfield. I've had several Springfield uh, 1911s. They all work. They all, they're, they're fine. Uh, do a good job. So, I mean, if we had a problem, it'd be an ammo issue. It'd be an aberration. So, uh, since it's already proven that it, that it works, now, with a 1911, of course, you know, it, 
they're generally pretty reliable, but you do have all those those issues that we all know about if you're familiar with 1911s. You know, if your extractor's not got the right tension on it and things like that, or your magazine springs start to get a little weak, you, know, you just have to baby them a little bit more, tinker them, keep an eye on them a little bit more. But uh, as long as you do that, they can be really reliable. So Springfield, like I said, uh, t and &E gun, and I appreciate Springfield sending uh, me this. I requested it. Uh, Springfield, uh, you know, what can you say? They make a lot of uh, really nice firearms. They're uh, the M1A, you know, of course, is sought after and lusted after by a lot of people. I mean, whenever I bring out the M1A, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> people slobber all over those videos and comments, and and I, and I understand why. That is just a beautiful gun that they make, and they make a lot of different configurations of that. And of course, with their 1911s, they have a whole array of those, uh, and you know, they they. Uh, I don't even know all the models, but I know they uh, they have them. Everything from the basic GI model that you have seen, you know, on the gun shop shelves, right on up to uh, models that are they're uh, modified to a greater extent than than this one. So, and this thing is in a I hate to say price. I'm thinking it's 750 something like that. I'm not sure. To tell you the truth, you can look it up, but uh, I don't know what the prices are even in gun shops. What they're uh, you know putting on the tags, you know, because usually you're Quite often, it's not the same as the uh, manufacturer's uh, suggested retail, but it's in a, a very reasonably priced, you know, category uh, for what it has on it. That's for sure. So, let's just take a few more shots while we're gabbing. I should have been reloading these magazines, shouldn't I? Uh, this is, of course, whoops, the uh, year of the 1911. So it's especially fun to do another 1911 video. Never do enough of those. We have not really meant to neglect it. You know, we did one at the turn of the, the year, and then we did a big one here recently, you've seen. We'll continue to shoot 1911s, whether it's the anniversary or not. It's just the way it is. We uh, love them. Not many guns I don't like. You know, I just dropped a bullet down in that magazine. I wonder how. See, I guess I could stand on my head and get that out, couldn't I? Okay, I know it wasn't that big a deal having a loose round in my, my mag pouch, but I just had to get it out. <laughs> I didn't have to quite stand on my head, but I uh, had to come close. But we got it out, and we're loaded up and ready to proceed. So I'm going to start out by, or resume, by waking up Mr. Gong. Okay, or at least try to. Huh. <sighs> All right, we've got black sights on black targets here. But I think I can line it up maybe, a little bit of luck. Let's throw a couple more at him. Oh no, we can't quit on a miss. We're empty. <laughs> all right. Well, we woke him up. I think we threw him all over him, but that's okay. Oh, let's get this guy right here, because sometimes we forget. <laughs> we tend to forget him. Careful. Here. 
свой, свой. All right, I think that empties me right here. Pretty nice shooter, pretty nice shooter. I would really have to do something with those sights though, I'll tell you. Uh, get some paint on that front sight. Uh, yeah, I don't know, do something with it. I'm, I'm just spoiled by that. I know a lot of the old school guys used to just leave them like that. But, uh, been too many years since I've shot a plain black sight though. I'd have to do something with it. As far as the kinds of shooting I like to do. Uh, I like really quick access on that front sight. And sometimes for me that requires a little paint. So we'll take a few more shots here. This is not a gigantic chapter two shoot or anything here. We just want to give you a look at the gun and uh, let you know a little bit about it. Show it in action. So we'll empty a few more magazines and uh, sling a little bit more lead out here with it. Big old 45 slugs. Put these away here. We'll just maybe shoot whatever we can hit with these six mag or four or five here. And go from there. How's that? Oh, there's one that's empty though. Let's load him. You never shoot enough 45. Ever. It's the year of the 45. You don't want to be stingy. Never. All right. Again, I'm, I'm shooting a variety of my magazines. We've been lucky so far, but uh, some of the springs I know are weak. I need to restock on my uh, 1911 magazine, no doubt about it. I do have two or three that I know are, are in good shape. But who knows on the rest of them? Okay. Let's pop a couple of animals or try to. Oh, pretty nice. Let's move back down here and play some now. Mainly just want to make sure it shoots straight and uh, show you all that it does. So let's just play right here a little bit. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. I'd like good 1911. You know, these guns, by the way, they are really designed to be carried cocked and locked. I don't know if we've talked about that before. You know, with the safety on, hammer cocked, uh, because you still have, I know that scares people. There was kind of an issue with that uh, uh, public, I guess, image issue with a lot of police departments that carried this and some who would not carry it for that reason because uh, citizens will, uh, I know what happened here in our county when I first started helping our county. They would tell me stories about that because everybody in the county, just about, uh, deputies carried a cock and lock 45 back in the late 80s, early 90s. I think just about everybody and uh, the guys I knew and rode with did. And uh, you know, they would, it would happen every now and then. Someone's in a restaurant, said, officer, your gun's cocked, you know. And uh, one guy I rode with a lot, he had a pat answer. Well, I hope so, you know. I mean, you know, it's just uh, an awareness issue. It's, it's an ignorance issue, not, not to be derogatory. You know what the word ignorant means. They're just not aware that uh, the gun's designed to be carried cock and lock. You have a grip safety, you have a thumb safety, and then the trigger has to be pulled before it will fire. You know, you sort of, uh, you know they don't just go off on their own. So anyway, a little aside, a little extra information there. No extra charge for that. All right, let's play with it. Nothing like a 1911 to play with. Up there's one of those springs. Uh, we got it. Didn't have it seated. There we go. Okay. We're ready now. Hopefully that magazine. That's one of those ancient ones. Okay. Let's go back across the hill. I'm really having a hard time picking up the sights quickly here. 
not as much fun for me with black sights. <laughs> oh, 45 didn't pull him over. Hit that time. <laughs> if you hit them low, they're hard to roll. Uh, one more magazine. Such is life. What should I shoot? You know what? That barrel does not have enough holes in it. It just does not. Got a spot here, hadn't been shot very much. So let's take care of that. <laughs> All right. Life is good when you have a 1911 in your hand and uh, Anyway, I just uh, wanted to give you a look at the, the range officer from Springfield. Uh, you know, they do a lot of publicity with it. it or you'll see a lot of ads in the magazines about the gun. I have, I know. And uh, it's, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a pretty nice little package right out of the box. Uh, comfortable to shoot and seems to shoot well, shoot fine. Springfield's a good name in uh, 1911s. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of a, a look at that and hope you enjoy that. Life is good.